Hey everybody, I'm back with some new tutorial. I, I've been MIA for a long time, I know. I am super excited to show you how to make these cute earrings. Um, my paper earring video was one of my very most popular. So I've decided to focus more on jewelry. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about what's been going on and a little bit about me as I, maybe as I, as I work, hopefully I can handle that talk and work at the same time. But I've got some of my clay creations on today. Oh, it's getting kind of blurry. It looks like I've got some, some genuine pearls in there with them. That's better. Maybe I'll, oh, I'll take one off and show you in a second. But yeah, let's just jump right in and get started on these fun guys. I'm going to try to just turn the camera around. I'm sorry, this is the only one. So I have been working on clay. I've been doing a lot more clay lately just because it's so much fun. I figured out that I can make... So I've been making jewelry, if you don't know me, I've been making jewelry for about 20 years. And I sell at the Sand People shops in Hawaii. Here's one of my earrings. So I've done these that look like stone. I hope that's focusing okay. It's hard to know. Out of clay, done those out of clay. And then these are genuine pearls that I wire wrapped. And I typically make jewelry that's more um, uh, expensive, stones, pearls, something like this that I sell in Hawaii. But I just love doing more fun things for myself and friends. And I decided I am going to open an Etsy shop where I can sell more fun jewelry and some of the more expensive or the nicer quality stones and things like that so anyway without further ado let's talk about what you need for these cuties um i've got obviously you need some polymer clay i think just about any brand out there i have heard not to use um Sculpey 3 for earrings because it's very brittle. All right, so you'll need some little cutters. And you can totally use just white clay for this because you're covering most of it with paper. I did use some blue to match the background of my paper. I think it turned out really cute. <clears throat> um, you will need some paper, obviously, some cute scrapbook paper, pattern paper of your choice. Yes, I've cut lots of pieces out of this one. I just thought this was such a cute springy paper. You will need some glue, some, this is my favorite glue and I will link it below. It's called Art Glitter Glue and it, it's a little more expensive, but it's so nice to work with. It doesn't leave a lot of streaks. It dries totally clear and kind of matte, so you can't see it if you get it somewhere that you're not supposed to. Um, anyway, you'll need some findings. <clears throat> I've just got some little post earring, ball post earrings here. I just got from, I think from Michael's. I've got just all kinds of stuff. These cute little posts. I might list these in my shop if I have time. These are some of my favorites. Hope this is focusing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough today. Oops. Um, oh, the fun thing about this technique is you can use your pieces that didn't really turn out or, you know, maybe you've got some bubbles in some pieces and you don't love them. You can totally just use them 
and cover them up with the paper. You can cover the fronts and the backs if you want to. Um, I have some cute little cutters here. These are from Ro Clay. That's R-O. Her name's Rochelle. <clears throat> she makes the cutest earrings and cutters. Um, but these, like this, so this is just an oval cut, you know, with the top cut off. So this is $2.50 at uh, Hobby Lobby. I think Michaels has something very similar for like $3. So if you want to be careful of your budget, you can grab some of those and then you just measure, set both pieces next to each other and cut the tops off. They're both the same. Let's see what else. You also need some jump rings along with your findings to hook things together with. Probably a few different sizes is perfect. You'll need a pencil, talked about glue. I showed you my favorite glue. You can use pretty much any white glue. I've heard you can use Elmer's glue or yeah, like school glue. Um, you'll need a nail file, a, like a pretty coarse one <clears throat> or a emery board. You'll need, and you don't have to do resin on them, but it makes them just so, much, it takes them to the next level. Makes them look so amazing. So some UV resin and a light to, a UV light lamp to cure the resin. This is my little baby portable one that I got pretty cheap. I'll see if I can find that again to link it below. I love it. Um, and then if you, if you don't want to invest in a light, you can get a little UV flashlight, anything like that. You can set them out in the sun instead. That's what UV, it cures in the sun. But <laughs> if it's like, it is here in Utah, almost the end of March and it is still winter. Like we've been getting snow, like you cannot believe. It's crazy. Okay, you also need something to make holes in your clay. Um, you, I, at first, I just used like a, a skewer, a wooden skewer that you put your meat on for a barbecue. So, um, you'll need some, oh, I forgot to show you this. These are some little tools that you can poke holes in unbaked clay with. It comes in a set of different sizes. I can link that below. I don't love doing it that way. I don't really like to put holes in my unbaked clay because it, I feel like it kind of warps it, makes it change its shape. You can use a little hand drill. I forgot to get mine out. I used to use a hand drill, which works great for clay, but not, not if you're doing resin. This little guy is my favorite, my favorite tool I've bought this year. <clears throat> this little rotary tool. I looked at Dremels and they're pretty expensive. This does everything I want it to do. It, it, it goes through resin and clay and paper together pr pretty easily. It charges really fast. Um, you can use it while it's charging. I love it. I seriously love it. It has made my life so much easier. And then I've got just a couple of little inexpensive paintbrushes that I got from the dollar store. I have one that I just use for the resin always, and it's kind of hard, but it's fine. <clears throat> and then you'll want one for your glue. Oh, is that everything? I think that's about it. And I've just got a little container here that I put some glue in to make it easier to spread. So, yeah, I thought these turned out super cute. Love these little flowers. I haven't put the backs on them yet because then they don't lay flat. Just got a couple other of my fun spring creations here. I'm going to move them out of the way. It's just so fun playing with clay because you can make anything. I mean, like you can make something that looks like stones. 
you know, or just something for fun. Here's a couple more examples. I'll probably do another video with 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 these. This was a whole sorry. <laughs> this was I have a little paper pad, like a six by eight paper pad, and all these papers were in it. So I'll probably do a separate video with that. I thought they turned out super cute. I love these oranges. Okay, I'll show you a few more examples at the end if you want to stay tuned, but let's get started. <clears throat> so my glue in my little container, I just pull the top off and dump some out so I can use my paintbrush with it. We've got this one glued on already. I'm just going to show you with this piece. Um, now, if you've never done clay polymer clay before you'll want to watch a video probably um, on how to condition your clay there's quite a few I know raising nobles has she's got a good one I'll try to link her below so you'll want to condition your clay and roll it out cut it out with your cutters <clears throat> and then let me show you really quick how we cut out the paper first before we do the glue so I will just take my little cutter. I've already got my shape cut out of the clay, but I'll take my cutter and I'll kind of move it around and see, okay, I like that right there. So then I would take a pencil and just trace around the outside of that. All right, just, just like that. And then take your you need some sharp little scissors and I didn't get my good ones out, but then I actually try to cut around the inside. You can see here the paper pencil line. <clears throat> Still, I try to cut around the inside of that pencil line. So you're cutting the pencil line off, All right? Hopefully that makes sense. Because I think the if the pencil line, if the pencil was still there, that would be way too big anyway if you cut it with the pencil line in it. I think the pencil line might smear um, if you put the glue on. I don't know. Maybe not, but okay. <clears throat> Hopefully that's clear as mud. Just going to get my glue and just dip a little bit of glue. And I don't sand the edges until after this step and just spread it on i love this glue it goes on really smooth i already said how much i love this glue but you'll just want to cover the whole thing with a light coat making really sure that you get the edges because you don't want it to lift up and that's all there is to that <clears throat> I'm just going to put my paper on and I might want to make sure I get this corner so I'm gonna it's a little bit bigger than the clay so I'm gonna put that corner there make sure it's covering all the edges I'm gonna flip it over and look you can see it hangs off just a little bit right there okay Got it where I want it. Now I'm going to put my hand over it and hold it down for a couple of seconds. Well, maybe like 15 seconds, but <clears throat> that's that. <laughs> okay, so I've got this one that I've already done that's been drying for probably about a half an hour. You want to let that glue dry for. Yeah, good half an hour because we're going to put another coat of glue on the top and then it can't really dry if you're covering the top. <laughs> okay, so after you let that dry, oh, I can't forget. First, we want to sand before we put more glue on it because the glue does make it more difficult to sand. 
So all I do is take an emery board. I'm gonna move these out of the way. <clears throat> oh, first, let's see if I can do it with these scissors. Hey, can you hand me those little yellow scissors that are in the vase? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna cut some of this off with my little scissors. These are really good sharp little scissors that I love to use for this. I will see if I can find them. Link them. Just gonna cut some of that excess off. It's easier than sanding it, okay? And then I'm just going to sand the edges going from the bottom up to get, there's usually a little bit of excess clay from what the cutter didn't cut all the way through. I'm gonna, oh, it's kind of tricky right here under the, camera. I'm going to make a mess on my table, but I'm going up in an upward motion to get that clay off. And I need my glasses on. That's another item that you might need if your eyes are getting bad because you're old like me. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I just go from the front to the back. And make sure that that paper is just smoothed out right. Because when you cut it, it might be a little choppy. But this smooths it out so it's perfectly flush with your clay. Sorry, my little bracelet's dangling against the table as I work. And it just makes it look really nice and neat and professional. Hopefully professional. Okay, I think I'm gonna trim that a little bit more with the scissors. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can mess with it. And then I, if it's round, I like to kind of just go this way and smooth that out. Perfect, okay. And then it makes kind of a mess with the dust. I usually like to do this like over the sink. That looks really good. Okay. Oh, I should have done this one earlier. I'm going to hurry and do this one too. So I can't remember, I've started filming this video so many times, I can't remember if I said that I was trying to run my jewelry business, design jewelry, make jewelry, trying to also run my Etsy paper shop, make videos, get stuff shipped out, it was way too much for one person and the jewelry got super busy after covid went away <laughs> in Hawaii like the shops that I sell at the sand people shops they pretty much were totally closed for six months so that's when I opened my paper shop because I needed something fun to do okay I'm just gonna <laughs> dump that on the floor they look good now you want to make sure there's no dust on them I just I blow on them and then wipe them on my pants. <laughs> There's probably a more technical way of doing it, but all right. Gosh, which one did I just put the glue on? I can't remember. I think it was this one. No. Usually it feels kind of cold when it's this one. I think it's this one. Goodness, my memory is terrible. So then you want to go ahead and get your glue and do the same thing on top of your paper. Now, I it took me a while to figure this out. If you were to just put your resin on the paper, it kind of eats at the paper and it just it leaves it looking like it's wet. So, yeah, that just doesn't work. So you have to seal your paper. 
and this might look like kind of a mess but again you want to make sure you get the edges really good because you don't want any of the resin to seep into the edges and it does kind of yeah it'll look like there's a there's water seeping into it or something I don't know how to explain it but it's not a good look I've tried, I tried so many times to do like a transfer technique with scrapbook paper and it just, every once in a while it will work, but it just doesn't and you just don't get a very clear result anyway. So this just works so much better for me. Okay, whoops. Now you can see it's kind of a little rough looking. I like take my finger and I should wash my hands first but I lick my finger and smooth out any rough spots hope that doesn't gross you all out make sure you've got all the edges good it's a little bit more right there okay Um, yeah, I guess I should have had, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do a part two to this video. Oops, got a glob of glue in there. Make sure you don't have any of that. All right. I like to work like from the inside to the outer edges trying to make it as smooth as you can don't want that glue on the edge though on the clay <clears throat> makes it harder to sand just like that and you'll see some streaking but once the glue dries it's pretty hard to notice so you can leave it just like that it's a nice kind of matte finish. Um, I know people will ask me if you can use Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is not um, recommended to use on polymer clay, I've heard. So it's kind of a thick coat because I'm talking. And... Anyway. Um... So... <laughs> Move it out just a bit. And that's that. I'm licking my finger again. Trying to smooth out some of those lines. And um, the thing I love about doing the resin over it is it it just totally makes all those lines disappear. So let me show you this again. <clears throat> you can't see any lines. I did, I think I did get a little bit of dust in these ones. But yeah, you can't see any lines. <laughs> They're so fun. So I am going to have to let these dry to do the resin so I will be back with part two of this video thank you so much for watching